Okay, so we're talking about rate of change. I've introduced speed as the most common example of rate of change. You have to divide distance by time. Well, if you were to do this as a graph, and you had, say, distance on the y-axis, and time on the x-axis, and you had some, say, change in distance like this over time, what you would do is you would calculate the run, you would calculate the rise, the rise is delta D, the run is delta T. You would divide those two things and you're looking for the slope. The slope is the rate of change. And if you're talking about distance and time, we call that rate of change speed. How fast is the distance changing with respect to time? That is speed. Okay. So we have to be able to work with graphs, and I'm going to give you the slope formula for graphs. Okay, and some of you are not going to like it at first, but hopefully, if you practice it a few times, you'll understand it. Okay, it's right here. I just blanked it out. This is your slope formula. Okay, some of you that have already taken like 10C, for example, then this should be a really good review, and you're going to be okay. Taking a look at this graph. If a line on a graph rises from left to right, as in the following graph, we'd say the slope is positive. Okay? The other situation is the one underneath, if the graph falls from right to left. So, like in science class, we always think about the x-axis. Remember, x-axis is left and right. Do you guys remember that? Okay? We always think of that as, like, say, time. And Time only moves one direction, so let me just get rid of that. So if time is always going to the right, think about, okay, the experiment starts here at zero, and time is moving to the right. Now what is happening in the y-axis? Well, the y-axis in science is like the responding variable. Okay. And the x-axis is the manipulating variable, the thing that you change. And often it's time. How long do you run the experiment for? Okay. So for example, say you're filling up a bathtub full of water. Okay. As time goes on, what happens to the level of the bathtub water? Starts to rise. So as time goes on this way, the water in the bath rises up. And this is represented by slope. The steeper the line, the faster the water is flowing. If the line is really low, like this, it's not very steep, then the water is flowing very slowly. Now in the second graph, if the water is falling as time goes on, what must have I done? Yeah, I pulled the plug and now the water is draining. Okay. So think about the bathtub example for slope. As the line goes up, you're filling the tank. As the line goes down, you are emptying the tank. And it's always pointing to the right. You always go to the right. And I'm going to let you guys watch a video, okay? And some of you may have already seen it, some of you might have not. Okay, continuing on. So. We understand that if the graph is rising to the right, it's positive, and if it's falling to the right, it's negative. Okay, so example one, all you have to do looks like is consider whether it's positive or negative, and then calculate the slope as a fraction. Okay, so in the past couple days, we've been talking about slopes without whether it being positive or negative, and in this section, we'll have to give it a sign. Okay. So, so slopes can either be positive or slopes can be negative. Okay. So let me give you an example. A drainage pipe. Would that be positive or negative? Negative, because it has to drain using gravity, right? And then like what about like a conveyor belt going up? Yeah, positive. Yeah, it's positive. Thanks for your con contributions, Jaden. Consider each of the graphs. Are they positive or negative? Calculate each slope as a fraction. Okay, so the first one, positive or negative? Positive, positive good. Second one, positive. And the last one? Negative, negative. good. 
Okay, now all we got to do, if you have another color pen, then this is going to be amazing. Um, all you got to do, count the, I think I'm echoing a bit here. Count the grid lines, and that'll be your rise and run, okay? So, so how much did it go over, and how much did it go up? And use perfect points. So I'm going to just look at the screen. See this section here? See how it's like not perfect? It's not directly on the grid, but this one up here is. You must, must use perfect points, okay? So, how much over? From 0 to 4. So that would be like delta x is 4. And then, how much did it go up? 3. So that's like delta y. Delta y is 3. And then sl slope formula is rise over run. So which one does delta y go on, the top or the bottom? The top, because delta y, remember y is the up down, and x is the left right. So 3 over 4. And when it's positive, you don't have to write a positive sign. You can. Nobody's going to get mad at you if you do. But if you just leave it 3 quarters, I'm assuming you think it's positive. Okay, next one. Start at the point here and go over and go up. What is delta x? Delta x is 3. And delta y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the slope for this one would be rise over run, 5 over 3. Okay, and it's positive. We already agreed on that. Now this next one. Following along with me, right, Nathan? You jotting things down? Okay. All right. Now for C, I'm gonna, and I always like just like Slope Dude said, you always go to the right, and I always just start with the run. So how much does it go over? Is it nine? Yeah, it's 9. So delta x is 9. And if we always go to the right, delta x is always positive. Now, if it goes down, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Delta y is negative 5. So then for this slope calculation, it would be the rise, which is negative 5 over 9, positive 9. So just like when you multiply integers, which are positive and negative, whenever they're different signs, the entire thing is negative. So that fraction is negative 5 ninths. So if you always go to the right, delta x is positive. And you notice I always went to the right when I was doing this. And then if your graph goes up, positive. If your graph goes down, negative. And then there's no issues, okay, if you always go to the right. Because if you go to the left, a positive slope, if you go to the left, you have to go down. And a negative slope, if you go left, you have to go up. So just always go right, and you'll be good. Okay, ready to go to the next page? Still need it a bit. Okay, so on their solutions, they have the same answers as us, but they use the slope formula. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to redo these with the slope formula. Okay, the slope formula, which is in your yellow book, or pardon me, yellow sheet. It's the second one down in the slope section. It's the second one down. Okay. I'll jot it in here for you. Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. I'll draw two, two lines. One up and down and one left and right. Okay. 
just to help you with understanding this formula. Let's take a look at the top of the formula. All it is is a subtraction. So let's say you had a value here like 6 and a value here like 3. What's the change in the y? Delta y equals 6 take away 3, which is just 3. So that's all it is. It's subtraction. Now let's do another one for x. That would be for the denominator. So let's say you had like 7 becomes 12. How much did it go up, up by? Well, obviously it's 5. Delta x is 12 take away 7, which is 5. And then the slope of this would be delta y divided by delta x, 3 over 5. Okay, so the numerator is just a subtraction in the up-down axis, and the denominator is just a subtraction in the x-axis, the left-right, and then you just divide it at the end. Okay, and you always see how the formula starts with the second term. See how it says y2, and this one says x2, and if you look at my subtractions, I always started with the second one. Okay, I always started with the second one. Okay, so in this one you just start with the higher one. Okay, so maybe we'll do one of these. Okay, let's do the first one. Okay, let's do the first one. So right on the left of it, you can just jot in the formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, in order to do this, you have to know what coordinates are. Coordinates look like this, x comma y. Some of you might remember this, some of you are like, I, I'm no good at this. But it's just a grid. So if you like look up on the ceiling, do you see the grid? Yeah, and if we put numbers on all the cross sections, you would be able to identify any point. So that's what the grid is all about. So let's take a look at this spot right here at the bottom left, big black dot here. What's that spot? They call it the origin because it has an x component of 0 and a y component of 0. It's in the middle of both axes. So imagine the axes went, went on forever both directions. Okay, it would be in the middle. Okay. Now what's this point up here? It's 4 to the right and it's 3 up. So this spot right here is 4 comma 3. So in order to use this formula, I first subtract the y's and you start with the second point. So this is a 3, this is a 0, and we'll subtract those. So we started with the y's. y2 and this one is y1. Now we're going to divide by the subtraction in the x. So start with the second point. Here's x2. So 4 take away x1, which is 0. And then you just do these calculations separately. 3 take away 0 is 3. 4 take away 0 is 4. You divide 3 divided by 4. And that's exactly what we got over here. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing this, but I think we should move on to a different question because this page is kind of messy. And if you're, if I've lost you sort of in the notes, I'm hopefully going to catch you on this page with some better notes. Okay, so build your skills number one. There's lots of room on the right. Let's start by right at the top, writing the formula again y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. And remember that the top is the rise and the bottom is the run.
So f our first job is going to be to correctly identify the coordinates. So I'm going to point at it. You're going to yell it out. What's this point right here? What? Two, two three. Because it's two x units. You can see two x units. And then how much up? One, two, three. So that's two, three. What's the one right beside it? See the one right beside it? What has to be the same in terms of this point? Is it the 2 or the 3? Which one would be the same? The 3, because it's the same Y. Okay, the Ys go up and down. So this one is 5, 3, because it's over 5. Over 5, you can see my red dot, over 5, and here's the 3, 5, 3. Now let's get the other two points. This one at the top is 6, 9, good. And this one over here is 10, 6, good. Okay, so let's focus in on the first line, which they're calling L2. Let's focus in on that one. If you had a highlighter or a pen or something that's different color, this would be a good time to use it. Okay, I'm going to highlight, hopefully this works, okay, did that show up kind of, okay, so this pinky purple color here, pink I guess, this is the change in the Y values, so I'll highlight 9 and I'll highlight 3. Okay, and then I'll change to green and I'll highlight the denominator which is the change in the x values well the green kinda looks like yellow and let me change that to purple didn't work very well Let's, I wish I could back up ooh that works good I'm going to use blue. Okay, blue. There we go. So the blue, which is the change in the X, now I'll highlight the X values. All right. So it's like blue and red here. And if you just keep your books on the desk, that won't happen, Nathan. Okay. So in the red, what do I subtract? 9 minus 3 or 3 minus 9? 9 minus 3. You always go from the second point as the start off point. So jump this, see how this, is, this point is farther to the right? So we would call this the second point, and this is the first point. So 9 take away 3, and then what's the other one? 6 take away 2. Do them separately. You get 6 divided by 4, and then if you put that in the fraction button, it'll reduce it to lowest terms. And if you just put it in with divide, you'll get the decimal. 3 to 2 or 1.5. And the decimal is completely fine. I just put in the fraction because sometimes tests can be sticky where they want the, they want the fraction. Okay, second line here, which they're calling L1. All right, so what do I highlight in the purple or the pink? Six and three. And what do I highlight in the blue? Ten and five. All right, so now when I go to my slope calculator formula, the purple, blue, or per, pardon me, the pink, purple, whatever that is, on top is what? 6, take away 3, and in the bottom, 10, take away 5. Do those calculations separately. You get 3 divided by 5. That is the lowest terms fraction, so I can go straight to decimal 
it's 0 0.6. Now, the question is, which is steeper? And obviously, if you did zero math, you would still know this answer, obviously. Which one's steeper? L2 is clearly steeper, obviously. Which one would you have more fun on if you're going to ride your sled down? Like it's a s tobogganing, right? L1, you'd go slower, and it would be less fun. Unless you're into a conservative fun. L2, you'd fly down the hill and probably hurt yourself at the bottom. That's more fun. No? Okay, so obviously steeper is understood. If you're thinking about math, then the number that is larger will be steeper. So the larger the number, the steeper it is. Okay? So you could jot that down if you wanted. The larger slope, the steeper it is. And you ignore the sign. So example, which one's steeper, minus 5 or 5? Which one's steeper? You ignore the sign because the sign is just direction. The same. They have this same steepness. It's a trick question. Okay? So ignore the sign. It'd be the exact same steepness, just different direction. Now let's take a look at the next two. And let's start with the horizontal one. Remember from slope, dude, what's the slope of a horizontal line? This is zero fun. Ditto. Ditto? <laughs> yeah, this is zero fun. So why is it zero? Let's take a look at the points. What's the point on the left? 2 comma 6. Right, Mr. Peluso? And what's this point over here? 9 comma 6. Now what do you do for the slope formula? Subtract the y's on top. What do you get? 6 take away 6. And then, then on the bottom you subtract the x's. 9 take away 2. What's your answer on top? This is 0. Fun. All over 7. 0 groups of 7 is 0. So flat lines, horizontal lines have slope 0. Now you go to the vertical line. What are these points? The first one is 4, 2. And this one is also 4, comma. In this, time, in this case, it's 9. Now for that slope calculation, you subtract the y's first. What is it? 9 take away 2, all over. And then you subtract the x's, 4 take away 4. You have 7 over 0. Now you try to put that in your calculator. What happens? 7 divided by 0. Try it. You get divided by zero error. And in math, we call that the worst curse word in math history. Undefined. Yeah. No, you get a promotion. I'd be happy if you said undefined. All right. Nathan, are you tired? Okay, so... Okay, one more to go, and then I'll let you try some homework. One more to go. Question three. All right. On the graph below, you need to be able to draw the lines, okay? Let's start off with the first one. And if, like I said, if you had different color pens, 
then it works out nice. If you got a pencil, then it'll be fine because they're going to make you do a dotted line versus a solid line. Okay. So a solid line that passes through point A and has a slope of 6 over 5. What does the 6 and what does the 5 represent? 5 is the? The X, so we call it the? Run. And the 6 is the? Rise. And which way do we always go for the run? Left or right? Right. We always go to the right. So if we go 5 to the right, this is where I'll take out another color pen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've gone 5 right. Now what do I do with this positive 6? Go up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then you draw another dot. And then if you want to be super neat, you can use your ID card or whatever. Or, or a license number, whatever, your, your ID. And you draw in your line. Now I'm just going to switch colors. And you draw in your line. Because I have a line tool. Yeah, but you have ID card. So you could just do a quick sketch off the ID card. All you need is a straight edge. Now the next one is a dotted line that passes through point A but has slope negative 3 halves. So I'll change color. What do I do with this 3 over 2? The run is 2, the rise is 3, but it's negative. So what do I do with the run? The run always goes to the right. So let's go 2 to the right. 1, 2. Now what do I do with the rise? Do I go up or do I go down? down. You go down because it's negative. So 1, 2, 3. Draw in another dot. Then you take out your straight edge, which is your ID card. And then for me it's the line tool. And there it is. Okay, so those are the lines for slope. Now, for those of us who intend on using math in our lives, this section is probably the least applicable because it's all pencil paper stuff. But if you're like designing a, a roof truss, you know, you would have to be able to analyze a blueprint and understand the slope in that sense, okay? There is some applicability here for sure. Okay, so question three is done. That means there's going to be some homework on that. We can skip past some of this build your skills. That'll probably be tomorrow. Depending on how far we get. Yeah, I'll probably go back to it later. So it looks like Questions 1 and 2 on page 50 to start your day. And then once you have that absolutely completed, yeah, only 1 and 2 on page 50. Okay, and remember the rules of the classroom. You have your headphones in if you need a distraction. Otherwise, it's absolutely silent in here. No. Yes, if you need calculator, come up here.